Morning Lisa, morning Luke. I'm well, thank you Luke, hope you're well. Hi from Hayley and Ellie. <laughs> morning ladies. Glad I'm not working today. I'm still a bit hungover from, the mor from last night. Can you see my face? <laughs> We all work at the Harrow in um, Bishopstone, um, and uh, we had I had a, a little drinky session there last night. It was very nice with our friends, and um, yeah, it was good. It was good. Had a few few too many rum and cokes, but yeah, hey ho, that's life. <laughs> yeah. Morning, Geraldine. Wait for a few more, then I'll get started on uh, on making this wreath. We're going to actually make. We've made this. I made this from uh, silver birch it's twigs. I don't know if you remember. A while back, I cut down my silver birch tree so I could grow more flowers in the garden this year. And um, so we've got loads of this these twigs. So uh, they're great for making um, wreath bases. Um, I've used them for all sorts of things. I've used them for keeping the dogs off my new seedlings. <laughs> I've used them for all sorts of things. Morning, Colette. Um, so, yes. So, um, we'll get cracking anyway. Um, so, yes. So, what these are the flowers that I'm going to be using today. These are the sort of flowers I'm going to be using today. I've got um, peonies, pink peonies. I've got some hydrangeas. I don't know if you can see these. Wait a minute. I've got some hydrangeas. So peonies, I've got some sort of antique roses, sort of very soft, almost like paper. Morning Linda. Um, and I've got some uh, sort of David Austin type uh, blooms as well. Um, I've got some sedums we're going to put in. And the greenery I'm going to use, um, eucalyptus. And also I've got loads of twigs. And I might put some... Um, some of the moss in as well some of the green moss i've got two or three different cut colors of green moss and i might use a bit of leather I've got some leather leaf as well so i might use a bit of that we'll see how it goes i'll just build it up as we go along like i normally do um so can see me morning eileen morning susan morning linda christine i think i've said everybody that's here so yes yeah, so basically i've just got bundles of twigs like this um, I've just bundled them all up when I cut the tree down, like I've told you before. So these are silver birch, um, silver birch twigs. Uh, morning, Jennifer. So I've just literally got a little, a few of them together, just tied it at the top, and I've just added little bunches of gone as I've gone along, and I've just wrapped it with um, this. Uh, I'm not using wire today. I thought we'll we'll use something a bit more, a bit more eco-friendly. Uh, so this is just uh, jute twine. Um, so I'm just basically going along. Going along, just adding a bit more as we go along. I've got another little bundle here. So you just add a little bundle as you go along. So I've got another bundle here, so I'm just adding this. You don't have to worry about it too much if you've got the stems sticking out. And just keep going around and around. Let me move it that way a bit. You can probably see me a bit better. So we're just going around. Just just pull those pull those, those um, big stemmy bits in a bit. We'll go around and around. Morning, Moira. Just keep going around. And the idea, obviously, is that you're going to go round and meet the other side, which is what we're going to do now. So we've got quite a big bit here, um, so we're just going to carry on. And I'm just going to cut this end bit off. It's a bit twiggy, which is where I started. So I'm just cutting these twiggy bits off at the end. And I'm going to put them into make the frame. I don't want it too big. So, see how big you want it. It doesn't matter if it's not very uh, very even. Just get rid of any really hard bits that are around the edge. So we're just joining these two together now. So let's put it under there, it's probably easier. Yeah. 
thing is. Okay. So you probably want it about, I don't know, roughly about 14 inches, I suppose. About 14 inches round. So now we're just add, we're just joining the two ends together. So I'm just moving round. So obviously this side is going to be a bit thicker. So we'll just add a bit more as we go round, just to make it even. Don't have to worry too much. Just keep going all the way around. So we're going to add a bit more here now because this has got a bit thinner. So we're just trying to make it even because we've got a double bit here now. So we'll just work a bit more in here. So I'll put a bit more in. We've got two more twigs. So we're just literally laying them on top. Going through the middle, going round. Good morning, Rosemary. As I say, you don't have to be too worried about it too much. Just need a bit more there. I want to make it a bit thicker. easier if we keep the string. Morning Matt. Oh, I've got a big bit there. Get rid of that bit. So again, just keep going around, getting rid of all your ends and just binding it together so you're getting that wreath shape. So just keep going around. I think we need a little bit more here because this side's a bit thicker now. So you can see you're getting your shape now. A bit more here now I think. Everybody enjoying the nice weather? It's getting a bit warmer now, isn't it? I thought it was going to be sunny yesterday, actually. <laughs> and in the pub, it was, uh, it was a bit rainy. So uh, that's quite funny, actually. You won't come running in from outside. I thought it was going to be sunny all day yesterday. Oh, we can't, uh, we can't odds our weather, can we? Right. So, so you can see we've now got our basic shape. Just going to finish it off a bit, make it a bit more even. So this is where we started, so we've come right round to the beginning. So just try and tie in all those really hard stems as well. Just keep going round. But we can always add a bit more if we feel it's a bit thin on one side. Just keep going. Morning, Sandra. Just keep going all the way around. down here see these thick bits here so we're just gonna we're just gonna bring them all in because they will give it strength the hard the really hard bits so we don't want to lose all of them a few more here sticking out tidy those up as well can see we've got our basic our basic wreath shape and to say it doesn't matter too much because you can get better shape once you put your flowers on but it's uh, you can see the uh, the overall effect so they're quite easy to make you can make these from you can just go down anywhere where you've got a load of weeds or twigs cut a load of um, twigs down get rid of all the greenery um, and then you can make a nice a nice step and all you need is a, a reel of uh, jute twine, any type of gardening twine. You can use wires as well. I've used wi wires in the past. Um, so that, that will do. Okay, so we've got our basic, one Geraldine, our basic shape there. Okay, so you can just twist it, just try and get the basic circle there. So they're quite 
quite flexible. This is quite good about silver birch. It actually moves quite. So there we go. We've got our basic round. Okay. Right. Move our flowers out of the way. Put, put my glue gun on, I suppose. I think we'll just add in. I've got lots of other little bits of twigs here. Morning, Elaine. I'm just going to add a few more twigs going around while the um, while the um, so we've got a bit more bit more twigs going around just to give it a bit more shape. So cut that off now. Okay, let me tie that back on. I think we'll do that first because that'll give it a bit more. So we're just tying these in. Let's tie the first one in. Give it a bit more. Bit more floaty edge. Okay, so we're just tying that in. I'm just tying that in. So, so I've just got a little a little sprig of silver birch here as well. So we'll do a few of those going around. Yeah, I've got a little pile here, small bits. So we'll just do a few of these going around, just to give it a bit more shape. A nice, it'd be a nice sort of floaty edge. Okay, that's the first one. A bit more. So you're just sort of laying them on. So you're getting that nice sort of floaty edge. Just put them on the top, hold it, spread them out a little bit. Don't want too long. Put them along along the top of the wreath. And then just bind them in. Three or four times, usually enough. Put a few more on top. We're just getting a little, a little, a uh, few little bits. Just putting them on the top like that, on top of where you've just tied. And then go around with your new bits. Looking tropical, yeah. <laughs> this is the top I made last year when I was doing a bit of sewing. I joined a sewing class, and um, I got this pattern. So I've got a few. I've got a few of these I made. It's quite a simple pattern. I like simple things. Me. <laughs> so I'll just put a few more on there like that. Just a few around the edge. Just tie them in as you go along. Morning, Catherine from New Zealand. Oh, be evening to you, I suppose. Saturday evening to you. Hope you've had a good day. The weather's not been too bad. I suppose it's your winter there, isn't it? I think we're going into the winter there. We're going into the summer, thank God. We can't wait. It's been such a long May. Too much rain. As you know, I'm doing a lot of trying to grow a lot more flowers in the garden this year. And it's just been horrendous if you if you grow things from seed. So we've had so much, and they keep saying like try and grow new seeds. So you've got like uh, successional uh, planting, but I've got nowhere to put anything. So there's there's seeds all over the place. <laughs> um, much to my husband's disgrace, really. He's uh, I think he's fed up seeing them all over the place. There's plants, there's dahlias in pots, there's everything in pots. So I haven't been able to put anything out in the garden yet because it's been so wet and miserable. So you can see what we're doing. We're just getting a little sort of floaty edge all the way around the edge. Let's do one right there. That's it. A few more. That's it. So we can always add a bit more at the end. It doesn't doesn't have to be a hundred percent. So you're just adding them on the top and just going around from the bottom with the wheel, wheel of tape. Just nice and tight. There we go, so you can see the effect. So it's just a nice loose edge around the, around the edge. Right. Thank you. 
because they will run away with me. <coughs> That's the problem when it gets uh, when it gets off the reel. It's uh, it's a bit more difficult to work with. So keep it short, otherwise you'll get all caught up, like I just did. So nice and tight. Lay them on the top. Just secure the ends. Nice and tight. Just keep pulling nice and tight all the way around. You can't really go wrong. Always need more than you think. Always, whatever you're making. See, I've come short. See, I need another bit here. So I'll have to cut a few more pieces. Okay, so you can see the effect. Nice strawy edge all the way around. Right, I'm just going to cut a few more bits because I haven't got enough. So These are from the Easter wreath. Do you remember when I made the Easter wreath? I had a load of little bunches from that. So I, took all, I took all them to pieces and took the eucalyptus out. As you can see, the eucalyptus has died. So I never waste anything. These were a bit too long last time. So let's take a turn just for a minute. Hopefully that should be enough. So no more bits. Just the right way around. All quiet, no one saying anything. <laughs> no one's making any comments. You're busy watching, drinking your cups of tea in the morning. Got some lovely photos on there from Elaine. She went to Kew Gardens in the week. It looked lovely. I, I think I saw something on the TV as well about it this week. Was some special water lily or something that was opening, hadn't opened before. Um, that looks very interesting. I don't know if it op it's open now. Right, so this last bunch you're just putting in between 
your last bits from where you first started. So you've just got to sort of wheedle it, wheedle it through really. Have to sort of wiggle it, wiggle it through so it doesn't get caught up in your first bunch. Yeah. that off somewhere handy I've got pieces I think when I first started so I'm just I don't know. I will be I've been using willow what other trees are good for bending um well willow yeah um this is a silver birch, which is great. I love silver birch. Um, any type of weeds, really, that you get um, down the lane. I know I, I just used to pick anything. I don't know what they were, really, to be quite honest, a lot of them. Um, you know, just go around and just sort of move it a little bit. So you've got a nice... Don't worry about the string, I can always get rid of the strings afterwards. Okay, so you've got your basic round. Okay. So now I try and move a bit of space, I've got flowers everywhere. And let's try and turn the camera around so you can see what we're doing here now. Okay. Right, so the way I do it is I start with my big flowers first. So the I'm using the, the head, I've got three hydrangea there, so I would I would work in threes going around. So if you've got um, so just cut a little bit, move that. So if you've got um, a little bit of stem, just can use a bit of it and just worm it down through the through the stems. Just sort of feed it in as far as it will go and then bend it in the direction that you want it. So feed it down through in the same direction and then you've got your flower at the top. So you want it quite close, quite close to the, to the, the base of the wreath. See that there. So we've got a little bit of space because you want to put a few flowers in, in the side. Morning, Jimmy. Okay, so we've got one. So we've got three of these in first. So we've got one. I would put. I literally just go right all the way around. So that one's been been fed that way down. So again, you're going to go. So a third of the way round, just find a bit of space, push it down into the into the um, stem, and just manoeuvre it around. So you're using the strength of the of the wreath, and then another one, a third of the way around here. So as long as you've done your tying in, you shouldn't need too much glue. <laughs> Got the glue guns on anyway. So some of the smaller ones will have to glue in. Okay, so you've got your three basic. Hydrangeas. And then we've got I've got the peonies. So I'm going to put those. I'm going to put those to the side of it. Now this is miles too long. So I'm going to put that to the side of the hydrangea. Now these might be a bit more difficult to get in because they are actually you probably don't need all of that plastic on there. glue these in. Anyway, let's cut them a bit down a bit shorter. Let's see if we can get them in a bit shorter. Because they're a lot the, the stems are a lot thinner. So push it in. If the head comes off, that's fine. You can put a little bit of glue on there. And just push that down. So, so I've got 
put one peony to the side of the hydrangea and I just basically carry on the same shape so we need these a lot shorter like real flat I see that one's just gone straight in really hard I'll push down the middle of the flower with that one and that one's gone straight in that one's fine depends if you've got a time if you've got a time point there then it actually goes in quite easily depends what it depends where your time point was so we're just working around it doesn't have to be, say, 100% even. We're just filling in. Um, I've actually got, I've actually got a few more. I've got a few more. Um, yeah, I've got a few more peonies, so I'm just going to put a couple of those extras in on either side, just to fill in. open up really lovely. I like them quite open. We've got another one there. The last one we might as well use the fifth one. Otherwise it'll be a bit uneven. So, so we always tend to work in uh, uh, odd numbers. Threes, fives, sevens always good. Always good to Almost as big as a hydrangea, isn't it? There we go. So we're just filling the club. So we're just putting those around. Then I think we've, I've got three of these. I've got three and I've got two. I've actually got two of these. Two. And two. And I've got two. I've got two of these anemones as well. Those in again, just cut them. I'm going to try and go in the same way that we've been threading down, so that's just gone nicely in there. Do the other one on the other side just to even it out a little bit. Let's see, it doesn't have to be 100% the same flowers either side, but it does make it a bit more uniform. We can fill them out a little bit. So we've got those two in as well now. So already you see, it's looking pretty full. And then we'll use the enemies. And there, we'll put one on the other side. glue gun yet so that's good the peonies and hydrangeas are, are pretty good for filling in there we go so we're getting there see how quickly you can do it once you've got your um your basic um shape of your your wreath that's the whole bit is doing the wreath really now we're going to put these in at slightly different angles to these are like the David Austin roses, so we're going to put a few of these around the edge because you've got to remember obviously where it hangs up. Let's put these in. Put a few of these around the edge. Do the silk obviously it ends around lovely. So I'll put a few more of these in. Be using my wire cutters, and of course, I'm not. Just make sure they've gone in, obviously, because um, if you're going to sell this or you're going to put it on your own door, it needs to be pretty robust. Okay, so we'll just work around there. Oh, I quite like these ones, they really uh, they look like David Austin roses, don't they? Right, let's break that. Um, we've got two big pinks there, so we'll break that up a bit. A bit of white. Mm -hmm. 
Okay. Let's keep moving it around. Okay, let's get everything moved up. Let's put it here. Again, we're just breaking up the uh, all the pinks. A bit of creamy, creamy uh, white. Looking forward to putting this on my door actually. I'm not going to sell this on, put it on my door. I've still got my heart one up. Remember the heart one I did before? Any of you watched the heart one? It's still on my door at the moment after the tulip one. We did the tulip one before. So there we go. So it's getting the basic, basic shape. It's a bit fuller than the picture I put on the uh, on the internet, isn't it? So we'll do a few more of these on the inside. Again, we're just filling in, filling in either side. Quite impressed with these. I say I haven't had to use the glue gun yet. So that's quite good. Paul and Suzanne, Mona Lisa. I get all my no, I get most of my silk flowers from um, country baskets. And there's one in High Wycombe. So that's my nearest one. I go there. Um, it is a trade place, um, but I don't know how easy it is to get. Um, get a, a membership card I'm not sure I've had mine for years so when I had the shops so uh, not sure how easy it would be for you to get one but you can only ask can't you can you ask they might they might in this day and age that we live in now everybody a lot of people working from home I don't see a reason why they wouldn't give you a trade card but I, I don't know let's say you'd have to you'd have to ask them um, I get a few from the range so they have some quite nice bunches sometimes um, quite reasonable prices. Um, where else do I get them from? I get some off the internet. There's a lady called Bella. I've, I've got I've had a few bits from hers, but you can't see them very well on the internet sometimes. I, I like to see them and feel them and, and, and get the, the texture of them. And you can't do that when you buy things on the internet. So I, I tend to not buy too much off the internet because uh, you don't really know what you're going to get. But they've all been fine from Bellas before, but um, I still prefer to feel and see and feel them. Don't usually like silk flowers. I know, I'm not, I'm not a big lover of silk flowers, but obviously they last. <laughs> they, don't, they don't die within a week or, you know, 10 days. You're lucky if, you know, if any flowers these days last more than 10 days. That's, that's tops, isn't it? And I think when it's a wreath and it's on your door... Um, you know, they get, it gets a bit of a bashing, so sometimes it's just nice to have something uh, frilly and soft and pink on the door. Why not? Why not? Right, so I've also got these. These are sedums. So we're just going to fill in with a few of those. I think these ones came from um, Bella's. She say she's she's an online lady that sells flowers online. So if you just look up Bella's florist I think it is um, she does sales I think on a Monday um, so what we want to do with those now just dot them around as well we can, we can fill in with. I'm going to have to manoeuvre them about a bit to get them in. But you can see the effect. It's, uh, quite simple really it's not complicated and the thing is obviously they're not fresh so they you know you, you're not going to hurt them 
you're not going to cut off their heads and think, oh, I can't use that one now. You just. Uh, That's why people like um, working with silk, I suppose, because you you have that freedom. I mean, once you've cut the stem here, obviously you can't. You can't. Um, you've got to decide where you're going to put it. Um, glue on that one because it's going on the inside. So we've just got a bit of glue. New country basket card. Had it for years. Yeah, are you are you a florist or Christine, or are you? Did you get it when you were trading as a florist? Or did you just get it? When you put the, when you put them in with the glue, just obviously hold all the flowers around it so they just they all sort of take it takes in the middle. together nicely now. So I think we need a few more bits on the insides. So we'll do a few more of those. Got a few left. horrible strings don't you really use glue just sort of push and just push and pull basically as you go along just keep going round looking round and then see if you've got any holes anywhere just a flower arranger got it when I used to do night classes oh well okay then maybe people can get them people can get them Maybe I'll ask next time I'm up there. I'll see what, see what they say. I'll let you know. I know there's a few of them around the country. I, I don't know. Um, I don't know. I think there's about I think there's about six or seven. It used to be Peter Harvey's, the one in uh, in High Wycombe. It used to be called Peter Harvey's, and then Country Baskets bought them out about five years ago, I think. There we go. So that's coming together now. So just if you just keep moving it around and then if you see if you have a look all the way through the middle and if you see a hole you need to put something there i can see a hole there but i'm going to put a bit of greenery in now as well so i think we'll use some eucalyptus it'll just lift it <coughs> this should probably go in without being glued but we'll see um, i will put a little bit of glue in here i don't want to talk about This was from uh, the range. It's quite a nice one. It's got like sort of different coloured leaves and 
when you do them in silk you can just sort of pull them up and get a nice sort of fluffy bit. So these can just go in some of them can just if they're long enough they can just go straight in just gonna cut it that is let's move these up and we'll have a few if you put a few in between the flowers it will just lighten the pink If you sort of cut it quite long, then you've got a lot of stem to push in as well. That will help. And try and go obviously in the, all, the same way that the, the wreath went in, but you can't always. So. Deeper type of greenery, a bit of this around the edge. Number two. That's what it takes. It's a good thing about hot glue. It takes pretty quick. So I think we'll have a few more of those bits of green just to match it up. So I've got one. These were the bits that came off the um, of the sedums. So don't waste anything when you cut flowers up. Use every bit, and that's a good thing about wreaths. They um, you can use them. Put them in the middle. How many more have I got? So count how many pieces you've got and use them accordingly. Six or seven pieces. So then we'll glue those all the way around. You can get rid of all the strings afterwards. That's dried. They do get on my nerves though. waste anything. Just put them all in. Just when I think I've finished, I take a photo of it up on the wall and always add bits I've missed. Yeah, that's it. That's what I do. 
usually when I've finished here, whatever I do, I then go to take a photograph and then I see a little hole somewhere. <laughs> so yes, so yes, you, you, you will always be adding to things. That's, um, well, that, that's pretty even, pretty even. But as you say, yeah, go around. I'll add a few more. I'll have a few more bits of uh, uke through the top. Just to lift, just to lift the, uh, the colours of the pinks. Pink can be a bit, I don't know, sort of insipid, I suppose. That's the colour, is that, is that the right word? Just to lift it, really. annoyed me because I've got a bit of metal on the top there that's really annoyed me that's better. don't know if that one's going to take enough we'll see in a minute we'll see in a minute so a little bit of green around here do is I look in one area at a time so I just go through through the bottom just add in anything at the bottom so we're just going to keep using these bits of so that one stem I think it was I think it was 199 or 299 but you get a lot of bits of eucalyptus for your money um, so go to go to the oh that was from the range those ones are from the range yes so I, I quite like the range uh, for this eucalyptus, it's quite nice. It's, it's no better in the wholesalers, no better at all. In fact, the one at the wholesaler isn't as nice. Um, so that is a that was a plus. To get that from there. Uh, so just keep moving it around and just look on the inside to see if you can see any any really big holes. I can't see anything too bad now. And then again, go all the way around the edge. Let's see if you can see. I can see a hole here. Greenery in here. Right, and if you snip, if you snip the ends off, then just obviously make sure you turn over the edge. So that the uh, the leaves aren't going to fall off. Going straight, and that will just fall out. So any that you think might fall out when you go to um, put it up on the wall, then obviously they need to be good. So just go all the way around. Turning, just keep turning so all you're doing is you're looking around the edge see if you can see any holes anywhere if you can then you need to just fill them with a little bit more greenery see there's a hole here okay, so that will annoy me so we'll get another little bit where was it here Check on the wall here. Where was it? that's it let that take so it means that so we've just filled that there. Do a little bit of a hole here as well. So just plug in the little holes. Obviously you're going to, we're going, we're going, we're, we, you only need it obviously in the bit that you're going to see. Don't waste your material. Um, you don't need to. I think that's probably about it actually. Right, and then I haven't put a hanger on it. So just hang it up like where you're going to put it and then decide which is the nicest side. So if I put this up here now, 
I would say that's quite nice. So I'm going to put my hanger at the top here. And what I what I learnt when I did this, remember when I did the heart shape one? Um, the heart shape one was a little bit e uneven because I just had I just had a one piece hanger, and what I found was that the, all the weight was on one side. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to do a wire. I've just got a piece of florist wire. I'm just going to do it here and just feed it through both sides. You've got loads of string to tie through and the wire just goes straight through. It doesn't always come out the other side though. <laughs> yeah, there it is. No, it doesn't want to come out. There we go. Please come out the other side. No, it doesn't want to, does he? It's going somewhere else. That's it. So we've got a nice long, what I do is do a nice long hanger and then that way when you put it up, so just turn, just push it on and just twist it, twist it onto the wire. Not complicated. And again on the other side. Obviously you don't want it too tall, you don't want it too high up otherwise you're going to see the hanger. Um, but if you just do it, just do it loosely for now and then hang it on the door. I'll show you it on my door later, you can see. And then there we go. So that's so that's how I would make a silk summer flower wreath. And again, put it on the door, and then you can play about with it a little bit. And again, if you see any holes, you can just go in again with a bit more greenery. But that's it. Hope you liked it. And I'm going to put that on my door now. I'm going to do a little video, take down the old one, put up the new one. And this is the beginning of spring, at the beginning of summer. We're going to have some nice weather now. Um, and I think there's nice weather forecast for the next week or so. So we'll have a look and we'll get in our gardens and we will do some gardening. And everybody enjoy, enjoy the hot weather that's coming our way. All right, have a lovely weekend, everybody. And I'll see you next week. We'll do some fresh flowers next week because we've done two weeks without fresh flowers. So. I'll have a look, see what you see. Um, anybody got any ideas? Let me know what, what you do. I'll see what flowers come in this week. Um, what I'm going to order, and then we'll go from there. Morning, morning, everyone. Morning, Maz. Morning, Geraldine. Morning, Tracy. Everyone's saying hello now. Thank you for sharing your skills. That's you're very welcome. You're very welcome. Um, let's say we're all here to learn from one another. So I learn from people every single day. And I'm in lots of different groups as well, and I learn lots of different things all the time. And it's just nice to share them. So, hope you like that. Have a lovely, lovely weekend, everyone, and I will speak to you next week. Okay, have a great time. Bye. Bye.